Good evening. If everyone could find a seat, we're going to be calling the meeting to order. Be Madam, calling. Madam Chair? Yes. I'd like to open the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for the purpose of attending your meeting at 632. Thank you. Okay. We'll now call the Board of Health meeting to order at 632. If everyone could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. First up on our agenda is to accept the minutes of the January 19th, 2016 meeting. Make a motion to accept the minutes. Second that. I have a motion to accept in a second. Any discussion? No? All in favor? Aye. 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 Pass unanimously. Up next is our Region 2 Emergency Preparedness Rep. Sarah. Hi. You can come right up. Good evening, Ward. Good evening. We've discussed doing our emergency dispensing drill uh, the week of April vacation at the Shepherd Hill High School. And I just wanted to see uh, how the board felt about uh, extending the invitation to uh, Charlton. They have a very active CERT team, and I know that they may be interested in coming. If you did have an event, you would be calling a CERT team, and most likely it would be this one. Um, I think the more involvement that you have with potential staff, the better. So I wanted to get permission from the board before offering that invitation. There's always possibility that we could work on a multi-year training plan and ask them to participate in a much larger drill that you would actually get credit for and keep this one very small um, in-house. Okay. Uh, How do you feel? Sure. I, I definitely think we should invite Charlton. And now the CERT team, does that involve their Board of Health as well? Or is yes. that separate? Okay, good. Because I did speak with a member of the Charlton Board of Health and they were definitely interested in this. So yes. that would be great. Excellent. And we have the date set for that? Yes, it's the Saturday of April vacation. Right. The, sec the second Saturday. Yeah. The 23rd, I think, mm -hmm. off the end. Excellent. I'll send out a reminder. Great. All right. Just wanted to know if you guys had any other questions on that email, with the timeline that I gave you, and what I proposed that we exercised. No, it looked good to me. I think it's a great idea to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'd be inviting Boy Scouts possibly the CERT team from Charlton and um, one or two members from the fire department because we were looking at calling for the trailer to bring over there. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure that I got all the participants so that I can email them and, and coordinate that. Mm -hmm. That'd be excellent. And if you have any further questions, just give me a call. Okay, okay. excellent. And we'll have see you next night. month. Thanks. Thank you so much. Okay, up next on the agenda is the proposed cemetery for Corbin Road. So, um, before we begin, I'm just going to make a couple statements. I want to thank everyone for coming. You guys can come right up. That's fine. Um, we're going to allow you to present, give your presentation. Then the board will ask questions. We'll allow the other members of the boards that are here for the town to ask questions. And then we will open it to public for comments. We are going to ask that if you have a comment to come up to the podium. You can line up against the wall and step up to the podium. We are going to ask to keep the comments at the podium so that we can hear everyone and address you properly so that we make sure that we're not missing any of concerns or anything. So we're going to just keep it in a good civil manner and feel free to line up and we'll take your comments after we've handled all the board members comments. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. I apologize. Good evening. My name is Imad Zurain from Develop Zurain, a civil engineer, and with me is uh, Dr. Khalid uh, Sadouzi, the president of the Islamic Society of uh, Greater Worcester. Uh, we're here before you presenting the, uh, the cemetery on Cobra Road. I believe the, Z the zoning board hearing last time, the board also the, was present. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll, I'll keep the presentation brief. We are proposing a cemetery uh, on the, uh, the existing farm that's on Colbert Road. 
We're proposing a driveway off uh, Corporal Road, which is about a thousand feet long with a uh, cul-de-sac at the end that will accommodate the uh, fire truck with a turnaround. And we're planning on building the uh, cemetery in phases, probably about four phases, which each phase, there'll be a turnaround at the end of the road. We'll start at the beginning of the, uh, of the project and move forward as, as the uh, graves are filled in. Uh, just to reiterate also regarding the uh, actual barrier, we, you know, we've gone through the uh, local uh, cemetery commission regulation, uh, rules and regulation, and you know, we will abide by, the, by those regulations as far as the uh, barrier is concerned. Uh, we looked at the maps for uh, public water supplies and this site is, is outside any, uh, any uh, public water supplies or zone two, what's known as zone two. Uh, Dudley does have a zone two uh, present, which is uh, down in the, uh, around the southeast uh, area of the, of the uh, town. If you have any questions, I will we'll be more than happy to, to answer. Okay. Go ahead. Do you want to ask? Uh, hmm. First question. Okay. So what we would like, because we're basically, you know, coming into this, I know you can read many different practices online and things of your burial procedure. We would just like a detailed documentation of what it entails. I don't want to just, you know, there's a lot of hearsay, there's a lot of reading online. So if you had something that, so that we know exactly what the practice that you're looking for is. That. Exactly, and, and present it. Right, yeah. just so that we have something to work from. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't want to, you can read six different versions online. So if we could get something documented in you, from you in writing, stating what exactly. It would be very specific to our, to our uh, right. congregation. Right. We'll, we'll present. We, do, we do have that document. So okay. We'll present yeah, if we could get something like that from you, that would be wonderful. Um, you can you know, we'll drop it off at the Board of Health or somehow get it, you can email it to the Board of Health or something. Just so we had that information to review so that then we can look at that and go from there to see what falls with our guidelines. Um, we're also going to be looking for um, a map from an engineer with um, the delineation of wetlands to see where the wetlands are. I, I know that there's wetlands on the property, but I don't know exactly where they are. I have rough ideas, but it's something that we need more specific for us. Um, we also will need the locations and the measurement. A concern to us is the surrounding wells in the area. So we want to have um, documentation of how far away the wells are from the prop where your proposed burial site is. Just so that we have an idea. We know that's something that falls in our scope, so that's information that we want. Um, we also would want a soil analysis of the area, and we also would want deep hole testing done to see the water table, mm -hmm. which is what we would like to know whereabouts the water table is, which is normal. Um, we would like our health agent present for that testing, sure. as well as any members of the Board of Health or if any other members. Also, um, conservation. The agent would like to be there as well, um, and you are. That is another step that you will have to go through with the wetlands is conservation, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you are aware of. Um, that's information that we are going to need, and we will be once we've heard, had more information. We will send you. Um, I have your address. I will send you a document requiring all of that and telling you exactly what we're looking for in writing okay. so that you'll have that yeah, no. and there'll be no question of that. I'll forward mm -hmm. that to you. Just yes, for, I'll review it with you. Yeah, just to, but that's just to give you an idea of um, things that we will need that are in our scope before we can, we understand. you know, go any further at this point, I believe. And mm -hmm. Do you have any questions that you'd like? No, that's the... Uh the extent of the preliminary information we want. I have nothing to add. Okay. <clears throat> Do any other um, town officials have anything they'd like to add or questions they'd like to ask? All set? Okay. Okay. A question on the uh, soil certainly. testing. Uh, 
is the uh, Asian, is a full-time Asian, or we have a part-time Asian? We have a part-time part agent, Asian. yeah. They work two, how, how many days a week? Or? Um, he's more of like an on, he's oh, roughly oh, 11 hours a week, so he's here when we need him, does what, you know, goes okay. to different things. We'll, we'll call him. Yeah, basically what I'll, we'll do is I will um, get you the documentation and then we can arrange, sure. you know, when you're going to have an engineer and hopefully we can arrange through conservation and everything to get out there and for the members to be able to be there just to see and to find out what exactly the land entails. Okay. All right. Any other questions for you? Okay. At this point, if anyone in the public has any questions, they're more than happy to come up to the podium. We'll open it up for a moment. You could come up to the podium, please. I'd just like you to be able to turn this map around because sure. none of us can see it, please. Certainly. Thank you. Yep, if you could come up to the podium and identify who you are and where you live, please. Yes, my name is Richard Raymond. I live on 191 Corbin Road, and I'm a director of butter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I got several questions for the Board of Health. First, first of all, a comment to the Board of Health. Thank you very much for, for that list. of You covered a lot of concerns that, that are out there on uh, your, what you're going to require for them to, uh, to prove so, so we can intelligently find out, you know, any, any effects to the water table because that land has been tested for a public water supply and has been approved and been recommended to be a public water supply as well. So uh, there's, there's some grave concerns about that. Along with the wetland situation, down in the, uh, the being a director butter, being there for 40 years and knowing the land quite well, and it took it overgrown with thickets, the, uh, there, are, there are at least two ponds and one stream that, that runs through there. That's that a lump, bunch of wildlife, and I know that's not yours, that's conservation. But in doing so, it, that raises a concern to how much land of the 55 acres would actually be usable for siting of, of plots, okay? Which raises the question, uh, when we were at the, the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals hearing a couple of weeks ago, it was portrayed to us that this, you know, in several areas that this cemetery, this proposed, this proposed cemetery, mm -hmm. would have a hundred-year life to it, with the with approximately sixteen thousand plots. To have that kind of detail, okay. Uh, first of all, somebody would have had to do some mapping rather than just guessing, or let's say just guessing square footage on fifty-five acres, and they're going to have to scale back, which changes things dramatically. Or if they're not going to scale back, you know. Where are they going to be? And how congested it's going to be in, in, in those areas for 16,000? It was also portrayed to us at the time by uh, by your group, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, the Islamic Society of Wisdom, I'm sorry, thank you. no disrespect. Uh, that the uh, there'd be like nine burials a year. Well, you know, there's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, okay? If you got a 100-year life trust cemetery with 16,000 sites, that's 160 burials a year, or a little over three a week. So it blows the heck out of nine a year. I do understand he, that, that that may have been speaking just for the greater Worcester area, but was also discovered that this was going to be a regional cemetery, mm -hmm. and in the region from Enfield to Dudley puts us into the greater Boston area in so far as that goes. So 160 a year on average certainly, you know, changes, you know, what was being portrayed to us at the Zoning Board of Appeals. Is your question to uh, confirm the number of burials per year? Well, to confirm the number is based upon how much is usable land and do they have to scale, do they have to scale back. And if they're not going to scale back, it's one six. You get a congestion. And if there's more burials per year, the, the decaying bodies would would have a generate would accelerate any contamination concerns versus nine a year. Okay? Understood. So the the question is the number of burials per year is is your question, right? Yeah. You know, and, and even though he may you know they may have been speaking just for the greater Worcester area. Where they're going to be the caretakers and owners of the property, they would have to allow 
the greater Boston area or any other area that's going to come in to bury this. So therefore, they have control well beyond nine. Okay, so I didn't care for it when I went back home and gave it some quick thought, and then we were kind of misled when, when it came to that. And so what's going to be, you know, what's truly going to be the, the burial rate per year, the number of bodies that are going in the ground per year, okay, is also going to have an effect upon the probability of contamination of the groundwater because if you've got 10 people a year versus 160 a year, year, you have more decaying bodies on the same in the same watershed. Okay. Thank you. Would you like to revise? Uh... The fact is we've had in the past, uh, past couple of years an average of nine burials a year. We've been looking for a cemetery for quite some time knowing that infield is, is at 85% capacity <clears throat> right now. It will still take the, the Connecticut area. We've been looking, like I said, five to 10 acres maximum. This land was available. It is 25 acres of usable land. The question was asked last time, how many graves can a 25 acres fit? And I, it's a math, basically. You know, it's a 10 by 4 graves with a, f a couple of feet of, uh, on, the, on the outside. I divided that area by the area of the grave. That's where 16,000 came from. You know, Boston area has their own cemetery. There's one in Roxbury, West Roxbury. There's uh, one in uh, Rhode Island. So we're looking for our own cemetery for our congregation at this time right now. I can't speak what's going to happen 50 years from now, but the plan right now is this is something for us, you know, for the congregation that we're, we're in. And the average is about nine a year, nine berries a year. Okay. You can step right up to the microphone and just identify who you are and where you live, please. Uh, yes, my name is Lynn Sklage, and I live at 129 Corbin Road in Dudley. Um, I would like to just point out that I do have an issue with the map that they have showing that little stream going through their property. And I want to... Certainly. The next page shows that. I went on to the town website and searched the Conservation Commission and a number of links that are there. And one of them specifically refers to the streams in Dudley as well as the number of budding towns. Um, this map shows one small stream going through the site. If you look at the map that I just gave to you, which is on record at the UMass, this is part of the, the links right from the Conservation Commission. There are a number of streams going from that site all the way down, feeding into all of our ponds. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm a bit nervous. I'm not a public That's speaker. Okay. When it comes to the number of burials, there was an article in the Sunday Telegram referring to this Enfield, Connecticut cemetery. The cemetery director said that they have approximately 200 burials per year. They are now getting filled to capacity. They have burials from the state of New York, from the state of Massachusetts, from abutting states. If Enfield, Connecticut is now full, and they are the only regional large Muslim cemetery in New England. Everyone is going to be centralized to Dudley. Your 200 burials a year that are no longer going to happen in Enfield, Connecticut will now be right to Massachusetts. At the ZBA meeting, they stated that they would be selling the lots to make up for the amount of money they had to pay for the cemetery property itself. When it comes to 200 fewer burials a year, you're looking at roughly four a week coming down our little tiny winding roads. Enfield, Connecticut is a city of 44,000 and more. Dudley is a small town of 11,000. I don't think that Dudley is the appropriate place for this type of use. No disrespect to the religion, but I just feel that with all of the watershed, with all of the streams, all of the ponds involved, I don't think that this is a proper use for the town of Dudley. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let me, I'd like let to me give, an issue. Go ahead, please yeah, respond. Uh, it will be addressed at the Conservation Commission. Right. That's no question about it. But right. The line we're showing is not a stream. It's actually the limit of wetland. All the land beyond that line is actually wetland. Similarly, on top, you know, we're showing, we're showing the, the, the wetland line that's abutting the development. 
anything beyond that on the, on the low side. This is all wetland, and we'll have to delineate that with you know wetland botanists, right. survey it, locate the flags, submit a, what they call an NRAD to Conservation Commission and get that line approved. We're showing, or we're proposing to, to locate graves no closer than 100 feet from any delineated approved wetland line. And that, that will go through the process. Right now, we're showing all the field within existing field areas, the areas that are plowed and have grown corn in the past Right. Past year, so that areas are, are, are all upland. Uh, so maybe the line is a little misleading. That it's called wetland line. It's not a stream. There are streams that goes through that wetland line, but right. And we, we will we will go through that process with conservation. Right, and that is why we we you will be going no, that saying. next step to conservation so that we can have detailed documentation of what exactly is on that property. Okay. Does anyone else have a question? My name is Kathleen Dalton. I live at 49 Corbin Road. My concern is for the water. One of those streams runs right through my property. I have lived in town for 14 years. I am concerned about our water supply because I have standing water, surface water that does not leach. I drove here tonight and I drove through many of deep puddles on this road. I know what the water is like and what the water table is like in this town. I know that the soil does not leach as well as some other places. I can only speak for my lot. If you'd like to come by the house, you can see the pond I have in my backyard. It's not really a pond, but it surfaces from time to time. I recently purchased a shed because our garage is so moist that my boyfriend's tools were rotting and rusting. We had to go through the Conservation Commission because the wetlands run through the backyard. I had to have them sign off on our building permit even though the shed was a pre-constructed structure that was delivered to our driveway. I first had to have conservation sign off. I had to have the building department sign off as well as the Board of Health. All had to be agreed upon with the setbacks and whatnot from the wetlands. I'm concerned because I know what the water table's like. I've lived here for 14 years. I don't want our water supply contaminated. Whether they put these bodies in a tomb or whether they put them in the ground and bury them green, I have a great concern for that type of situation sitting there. I don't know how deep they're going to dig this hole. I can only picture a body, a dead body, sitting there in the soil in water. This is why they are coming to us step by step I so that only hope so so and that I we would can hope that you would just address our concerns seriously I am concerned about our water supply our water supplies are private we have wells our water comes from the ground that water that runs through my property comes from that property that's why I'm here I'm that's concerned about our water supply in so as the Board of Health, our job is to protect the safety and health of the town, and that's what we are here to do. And we will walk through it step by step to find out all the answers that we can. This is a first time for us having something just, like this before us, so it I is going to be a process. I know the cemetery down the street is not in the wetlands. I know there's a reason that cemeteries are not placed in wetlands. Thank you. Good evening. Ken Shellers, 223 Ramsworn Road. Um, I have a question. Who regulates the cemetery? A private cemetery is Board of Health can set standards in the town, but overseeing it um, I'm not sure I just I'm gonna give you a so vague we've all seen the pictures mm -hmm. of 
the other cemetery. If that doesn't meet up with our standards, what recourse do we have as a town to make them fix it? Because I've talked to a couple real estate agents since the last mm -hmm. meeting, and I will tell you that all of the real estate agents that I, talk, I spoke to and showed those pictures, every one of them said, all of the houses that are abutted to that cemetery, their property value is going to go down. Nobody's going to, not nobody. It's going to be difficult for them to sell houses. And uh, so what recourse do we have? If we let them come into town, we don't like their cemetery, we don't like the way it looks. Yeah. Um, Madam Chairman, just to answer the individual's questions, uh, as you mentioned earlier, this is a sort of a first time for the Board of Health and I believe for the Zoning Board addressing a request for a private cemetery. Uh, the Board of Health has regulations, uh, actually they're the Town of Dudley Cemetery rules and regulations that were uh, adopted by the Board of Selectmen and the Cemetery Commissioners uh, for the preservation and protection of municipal cemeteries. So one of the things that we'll be working with the Board of Health on is the development of reg rules and regulations that relate to private cemeteries that probably will track these. And a number of these regulations speak to your concerns in terms of the maintenance of the, of the cemetery. Uh, the applicant has also presented a petition for a special permit before the Zoning Board of Appeals, which was heard about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals can grant that special permit with conditions or if it determines that the special permit does not meet the criteria, the Board of Appeals could deny that special permit. If a permit is granted by the Board of Health or by the Board of Appeals with conditions, and if there are violations of those conditions, then in the same way that the building inspector would inspect a piece of property if you complained about your name, doing illegal building without a building permit, mm -hmm. then the Board of Health and the Zoning Board would have the right to bring enforcement actions to ensure that the regulations and the conditions of any approval are satisfied. And if necessary, we'd send a notice of violation. If that isn't adhered to, we'd go to court and seek an injunction. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Mary Sansusi and I live on uh, Ramshorn Road in Dudley kind of around the corner from, from this um, proposed cemetery. I really want to take issue with the plan because the town has drilled a well mm -hmm. on this property in 1997, and it's a real gusher. There's a, I have a two-page letter here from um, the uh, company in Concord that did some data on the well. It, I don't see it on your plan. What You're not aware that there's a well that no. the town drilled? It is um, located, that land runs north and south. It run, is your map drawn to scale? Yeah, north to south, yeah. It's the scale, yeah, it's the scale. Approximately right here. I can show it. This it's covered by a few trees and shrubs. This is why that we are going to be sending communication back and forth to have um, people go out, to have an engineer go out and looking at the property so that we can find information. Yes, it's a thousand feet from Orban Road along the uh, westmost stone wall on the property. And 1,200 feet from Ramshorn. Yes. This isn't drawn to scale because you just said your road is a thousand feet. About a thousand feet, yeah. No, it's more than that. The well should be right in this area right here because the pond is over here. And this, this is why we, this is understanding that it's a preliminary okay. plan and um, we will take that when we meet with the engineer and everything. We definitely will. We'll know, add that to the list of questions and for our engineer. Be addressed. All right. Thank you. Why aren't the two ponds shown? There's two ponds on the front. They're within the weapons. They're within the weapons below. Excuse me. Area. Excuse me. When you have a question, please address us. I'm sorry. Thank you. Just so that we make sure we're catching every question. The two ponds are drawn on here. Okay. I, Once again, we'll we'll address that with most the, definitely the detailed site map. Okay. Were you aware? 
Excuse me. If you please over to the podium so that everyone can hear. Thank you. I would like to direct my question to the chair. Mm -hmm. Do these people from Worcester, from the Islamic Society, know there was a well drilled on this property in 1997? No. Okay. I just find that hard to believe. Again, I, I, we definitely will add it on to our list of everything that we'll be going over, most definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi. Hi. My name is Jamie Gelinas. I live at 185 Corbin. I bought my house 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. And when I first bought my house, I didn't know too much about the property next to me. I do know that it cost over $30,000 to put my leach field in because it did not pass Title V and they had to build the ground up. I can't even tell you how many truckloads of dirt they had to bring. I have an embankment on the side of my property that's got to be about 12 feet high and it literally goes higher than their stone wall to their property. All right, but that was the only way that they could manage because of the high water table. They said that it was the only way to get it to pass as they had to go through all this. Now, you built some houses and I didn't say anything when the houses went up because I didn't grasp the concept of how well water went and everything, but when I bought my house, my well water was wonderful, okay? I never came to your meeting because these houses were built on the other side of the street, didn't think they were gonna interfere with my water or anything. I have a daughter who is, has very sensitive skin, and when those houses were built, all of a sudden my water changed. And I have a very high sulfur content in my water now, and I spend a lot of money on filters because there's eight of us in my house, mm -hmm. which unfortunately I have to have a filter for when the water comes in and then filter for each and every, you know, I, so it's very costly. And I never realized at the time when you guys built those houses and you sent out the petition for the drilling, what that was gonna entail. All right, researching everything that I have, knowing what I've gone through in the 11 years that I've lived there, Okay, I realize how much we don't understand how the underground veins run and how they impact us on every little thing that happens. And I mean, I'm not only concerned about their bodies being in the ground, but the digging to put those bodies in the ground is gonna shift soil, it's gonna disrupt veins, just like drilling did to Mayan. And it's an expense that I, I, I gotta live with because that's my home. And I don't get a tax break or anything, you know, based on that. They're saying they don't know what's going to happen 50 years from now because they're not going to be here. They're not going to know who's maintaining the property. And once you allow something, it's like, okay, say hypothetically, they don't do it to code, you take them to court. They don't abide by it. You're going to dig up all those bodies and bring them somewhere else because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. You know, I mean, that's a big issue. I'm sorry, I'm not you know, highly educated or any of that other stuff. I don't know all the stuff that you guys gotta go through, but I know one thing. I know what I pay, I know what I've been through, I know what I hear, and I know what I read. And it's like, those have gotta be serious issues that have to be taken into consideration. Thank That's you. All. Thank you. Yeah, Richard Raymond again. Uh, a couple of comments. Previous to this, at your last month's meeting, uh, although it wasn't on the agenda and was put on agenda tonight, there were still some comments made. And I believe one of the water commissioners, previous water commissioners, was uh, at your meeting. And he made a very interesting comment. And I think it had a lot to do with the 1997 drilling of that well for the public for testing for public water supply. And this is something that may you may want to look into. When they did that, there was a mention that the underground aquifer, all right, flows from that area all the way down to the, the wellheads for the town well right now, okay, where, where they are, let alone that becoming a public water supply. The, the aquifer that runs underground goes all the way down to our present town wellheads, mm -hmm. okay. Now, you may, I'm sure I'm speaking from a lay position, but uh, you may want to get that verified in, 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 uh, when, you, when you look into that. 
the area in, in conservation will deal with it in conservation I mean there's more wildlife down there you can shake a stick at right now and quite frankly that place is getting overrun very seriously by coyotes you can sit out on your deck at night and just hear you know and they're just going crazy so therefore they are foragers they dig they do and so we guess we have some concerns and a question for town council under the Dover amendment and I speak I'm just curious the, the an application dealing with religious freedom freedoms okay gives them great latitude and you in the town very little latitude except for regulating some, some areas okay but once that is done and there's an approval going how much latitude under a religious commitment <coughs> does any municipality have dealing because of separation of church and state once it's been approved does the town have the control they would over a private citizen in their regulations or do they lose a lot of that control due to the separation of church and state I don't know that's why I'm asking you um, <clears throat> want to handle that in the next uh, zoning meeting or? No, I'm, I'm happy to address it, Madam uh, Chairman. The, um, as I mentioned earlier, the approvals that the applicant uh, needs to seek from the town uh, to date has been discussed at the zoning board for the special permit uh, for a cemetery in the residential zone. The uh, requirement for the Board of Health approval um, under Chapter 114 of the Mass General Laws, requirement for Conservation Commission approval uh, for any wetlands that are involved. Um, and in each one of those approvals, and the Board of Selectmen as well, uh, once the Board of Health is acted, has to review the matter. Once those approvals are granted, if they are granted, uh, they can be granted with reasonable conditions. And by reasonable, they are conditions that are not intended to nullify the use, but in the same fashion as any member of the audience and any party in the town of Dudley sought zoning approval or other approvals, they would be conditions that would go to regulate the use in perpetuity. And those conditions could be enforced by a court action. So if an approval is given by the boards in question, those approvals with conditions can be enforced to ensure that the protections that are there for all the abutting properties and for not only the residents of that area but the residents of the town as a whole, including the water supply, that all of those protections will be enforced throughout the course of the uh, use of that property. And uh, I can tell you that I've been involved in enforcement actions on matters, whether it's a religious use or whether it's a private use, a private developer going in and in the course of development violates a condition of a zoning board or a planning board, those are enforced by a court action. Uh, and in the same way that religious uses are required to comply with reasonable dimensional regulations under Chapter 40A, Section 3, which is called the Dover Amendment, those dimensional regulations must be enforced in a reasonable fashion. Uh, but they can be enforced in the future in the event there's 10, 15 years of compliance and then in the 16th year, there's non-compliance. Those regulations and those conditions can be enforced by a court action. Is, is that supported? Is that supported right now by some of the private cemeteries, which have religious applications, like in the town of Webster, for example? There are a couple of private cemeteries in the town of Webster which are religious in nature. Okay, and do they do they have something similar as to where is it, there is an enforceable uh, agreement on it? Uh, it, it's, it's, just, it's just a concern we, we see many, many times, okay, and we hear many, many news reports that when something falls under the protection of a religious application, and it doesn't matter what the religion is. I'm, I'm not here knocking anybody's religion. I don't care if it's Catholic, Baptist, you know, Islamic. It doesn't really matter, you know. But once they fall under the religious protection, okay, you know, as a, as a lay, and I'm going to say it again, as a lay person, I get real concerns about them, the people that fall under that protection have a greater latitude than a private citizen. Well, I think the important thing to point out is that the Dover Amendment that you mentioned, and which for the members of the audience, the Dover Amendment protects religious and educational uses, which can involve a church, a school, 
uh, in the term educational uses has been extended to include uh, halfway houses for certain uh, types of recovery programs. Um, so that the term religious and educational uses and the Dover Amendment apply to zoning. Now the Board of Health is acting under Chapter 114 of the general laws, which is not the Zo Dover Amendment. There's a separate set of regulations and statutes that govern cemeteries. And specifically, 114 Section 37 says that Boards of Health may make regulations concerning burial grounds and internments within their towns. They may impose penalties not exceeding $100 for a breach, may prohibit the use by undertakers, and so on and so forth. As I mentioned earlier, we have a set of regulations for the town cemeteries. What we'll be looking at will be the regulations that the Board of Health can adopt under Chapter 114, which apply to private cemeteries. And then, of course, the Conservation Commission conditions on wetland approval. The Conservation Commission jurisdiction is not impacted by the Dover Amendment. So the Dover Amendment only affects the zoning issue before the Zoning Board of Appeals. Well, that, that, that's an interesting comment. I'm glad you cleared that up because, quite frankly, the way it was presented a couple of weeks ago, it was like a fait accompli. It's done. Dover Amendment, here we come. So, Well, I think I just want to mention, that, and not to oh, no, prolong please. it, Madam Chairman, that at that meeting two weeks ago, I reminded the attorney for the applicant that when the building inspector on January 7th said that this use needed a special permit, the applicant the same day filed the application for special permit. The applicant did not appeal the building inspector's decision regarding the fact that it required a special permit and citing the Dover Amendment. And the 30 days has passed for that appeal. So right now we're dealing with a special permit uh, before the Zoning Board of Appeals. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hello, my name is Kathy Hurst. I'm a resident of Dudley for 20 years now and I live on 15 Camelot Circle with my family. I know this is for the Board of Health, but I hear you keep referencing the Dover Amendment. And since the last uh, ZBA meeting, I've done a lot of research on that. And there are a lot more uh, recent cases concerning that. The Dover Amendment was, began, I guess it was in 1947, I believe, and became an amendment in 1950. And its original purpose was to protect, uh, to put on a level playing field institutions like parochial schools so they'd have the same sort of advantages as a, pri as a public school or a private school. That's where what its orig original intent was. So since then, and I'm just going to read, I mean, I've got a whole slew of literature on this, but I like to read this for the audience that uh, my emails have probably not reached. Okay. If I might ask, please, is it regarding the Dover Amendment or regarding something for the Board of Health? Your email. I'm, I'm just one quick thing, and then I'm going to go into the Board of Health questions. Okay. That I have. About the Dover Amendment. While a corporation must be merely nonprofit, and legally able to engage in educational activities to be considered a nonprofit educational corporation or religious, the actual use of a particular facility must have education <coughs> as the primary and dominant purpose. That was the intent of the Dobermann. And all the legal, and since more, most recently, 2012, 2014, 2015, there have been cases where uh, people have tried to use the Dover Amendment and it was, it's, be, the, it's being narrowed down now to its original intent. So that's why this whole thing has been kind of a fuzzy math kind of situation for anybody. But my uh, original reason for being up here tonight, I wanted to know who's going to be the engineer to do this process? Is it going to be our engineer that our town employs, or will, are they going to pay for our us to choose an engineer, a licensed um, specialist? At, at this point, um, we have just received information regarding this, and I think we'll be discussing with town council exactly how to pursue that. But 
it will be regardless it will be they were responsible for the payment of an engineer right. it's something that they would they have to provide to us when we get to that point um, and also we would want our agent that's why we're asking right. for all boards present and everything but I right. I think we're still in the process of trying to work that out right and just to just to clarify a point uh, I was just checking through my notes when you were speaking but I, I think you mentioned that you your understanding that the Dover Amendment only applies to educational uses? Well, it has, for now it has agricultural in there, but there is, it is not meant to be, uh, if there's any land or building, it has to have an educational purpose right. other Actually, than agricultural or solar, uh, especially for places like child care, there's a lot of cases on that, but for a for instance, if a one of the cases was for an elderly complex to be built, it couldn't be done under the Dover Amendment because they could not prove that the foremost, predominant use was going to be for education. Right. There's a Regis College case to that effect. You know, right. the, the placement of elderly housing on the campus and allow right. the elderly residents to take advantage right. of courses. There, I, mean, I, I, I have several things here, but I've got many at if, home. If I can just point out to you, and I'd be, I'd be happy to send you something to that effect, but, but 40A Section 3 applies to religious and educational uses. One, one religious case of note was a, a Church of Latter-day Saints in the town of Belmont that wanted to build in an area, and there were residents in the town of Belmont yes, that opposed it. Yes, it was about the, the height of their steeple. It was the height of the steeple, and that was a religious use. And the question there was, did the, did the town have reasonable dimensional regulations? You couldn't prohibit the use, but you could require so many parking spaces, so much setback, so much front yard setback, height of the building, things of that sort. So if you're familiar with that particular case, mm -hmm. the Belmont case, the Mormon church case, right. that relates to religious uses. This is a religious use. And in 40A3, which has been in effect since 1975, clearly says religious and educational uses. It also includes agricultural uses. So that's the reason that we well, over and over again, and these are recent articles from between 2012 and up till 2015, where they have um, specified that it had to be, the purpose had to be predominantly educational. All right. I, th I think you're reading, I think you're reading, if you're reading the Regis College case, there they tried well, to argue that, the, that predominant, the predominant use was educational. The, t the, uh, the court determined that the use was not predominantly educational. But that only dealt with an educational use. That did not apply to the language of 40A Section 3 says, no zoning ordinance or bylaw shall regulate or restrict the land, use of land or structures for religious or educational purposes. So. Well, we, excuse uh, me, excuse me. Do you have any more related to the yes, Board of Health? Certainly. And but the reason I brought up the engineer question is because in looking back on previous cases with within uh, other towns such as Walpole there was a big discrepancy between what information was given from an engineer that the town procured versus what was originally told to the town uh, my other questions were uh, will the Conservation Committee do their own survey as well for our town? We will be sending them to Conservation. They'll handle the, uh, different aspects of and that. And it's not only protecting groundwater and knowing where there are streams or wetlands, but in which, which direction the flow of the water goes. Mm -hmm. So, and the drilling has to be more than just, you know, has to be throughout the area. Uh, Lastly, the perpetual care, I think it was brought up about who was going to maintain, but would that fall on to the town as far as plowing it in the it, winter time? It's a private, it would be privately owned. So it would be similar to um, if you own your house, you're responsible for plowing, okay. your driveway businesses are responsible for plowing their yards. And again, that's more information that would be ironed out further on down the road. And when this group uh, was trying to get the cemetery in Douglas one of the questions asked was who was going to maintain and they said they didn't have anybody that really maintained it except for volunteers 
Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, yes. Did you did you want to respond? You sure? Okay. You're more than welcome. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes. My name's Raymond Billadu. I live on 149 Carbon Road. When I look out my backyard, there's a pond on my property. Just above that, directly above that, is the hill where the cemetery is going to be built. Now, when the spring thaw comes in, there are two good-sized brooks that flow down that hill into the pond on the back of my house, which then flows west all along Carbon Road as a wetland. I can't see how that's not going to be disturbed by all of this digging. I, I can't see how that's those two brooks and so forth that are not going to be disrupted. Okay. And I have that concern. Any other concern I would have would be um, who will be monitoring the, to see that this is done, these burials are done properly? I'll defer to you. <laughs> Madam Chairman, if, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, in addition to the existing Town of Dudley Cemetery rules and regulations, uh, the Board of Health can adopt regulations that relate to private cemeteries. Uh, and the issue of maintenance and responsibility would be addressed in those regulations. Those regulations would be incorporated into any decision of the Board of Health, and so they would have to be complied with. If uh, anyone from the conservation people would like to come down the house, in the spring and witness those two bricks pouring down into the pond on the back of my house. I'd be glad to show them. And of course, I have my concerns too because my well was right there on the corner of that property. And I know where that water's coming from, you know? And I, but mainly it's, I, I just can't see this as not disrupting the flow of that water. Those two bricks would flow right down off the top of that hill with that up pond and then go west along Corbin Road as a wetland, which is shown at the bottom of that map there. But it doesn't show the pond that's up above the property and running through it. Uh, I don't see that there either, but, well, anyway, that was, that's my concern. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I'd like just to make a comment. Certainly. Uh, regarding, <coughs> regarding the barrier, and we, we, we are contracted with a, uh, with a funeral home. And we, it's not like when somebody passed away, we bury him ourselves. You know, it goes to a funeral home and there's a whole procedure, legal and, and, and what have you. So, you know, there's a concern that, you know, the rules are not followed. You know, we could get uh, paperwork from the burial, from, from, a, from a funeral home that does the, the service on a you know quarterly basis or or, or, or every barrier to send something to, to the board or something if, if I that's something that you guys think if I can ask you um, one question do you have a burial agent yeah we have, uh, is that we're, we're, is, we're contracted with the barrier uh, with the funeral home in, in Worcester okay yes. and that that's your acting burial agent yeah, right yeah. the name of the uh, Putnam and Mahoney funeral home they do most of our burials, uh, but there have been burials done by other funeral homes too. Uh, this is the choice of the family, whichever funeral home, but they are all licensed funeral homes who do our burials. Okay, cause so yeah. the qu one question, so that would be the uh, preparation and the burial. Uh, I think the original question was about maintenance and uh, upkeep of the property itself. Uh, we will leave it to Board of Health or the Zoning Board or uh, Town of Dudley, whichever, whatever requirements there are for the other cemeteries in the area for the maintenance, we will abide by those regulations and we will try to comply with those regulations okay. to maintain it. It all depends what are, what are the rules and regulations which are governing other cemeteries in the area and we will 100% uh, abide with, by those. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Steve Borowski, 161 Corbin Road, Dudley. Okay. I got everybody be. I've been living there for 72 years, going on 73. And the 
Attorney said you were going to abide by Chapter 114. Excuse me for one moment. Excuse me, could we keep the side comments? I'm having a difficult time hearing. Thank you. Are we uh, going to make all the rules and regulations on Chapter 114? You mentioned that before, burial board of health regulations, state board of health. Yes, in, in, forming, and in forming those regulations, uh, the board of health can look to the existing regulations that relate to town cemeteries. Yes. And then they could also survey regulations for private cemeteries from yes. adjoining communities. And when I was a wee broth of a lad in the 50s and 60s, I worked for the cemetery department, and there was a burial agent for the town, uh, Tom Scott, and he did for years and years. Mm -hmm. And that, I just say, we had one, but I think over the years, it's been let go. No, the Board of Health does have a burial agent that works for the um, the municipality cemeteries. Okay, good. He probably can do double duty. That is correct, yes. Oh, we, very good. Yes, but, very good. Um, a private cemetery that does come into the Board of Health, it's my understanding, through reading through, um, they can provide us with a burial agent. They have to be registered with the town and everything. That's why I was asking. And that's more information that will correspond to you as well. I'm just wondering about Section 35 of Chapter 114. It says lands to be used for burial. No land other than so used and appropriated on April 10, 1908 shall be used for the purpose of burial if it is so situated that surface water or ground drainage, therefore, may enter any stream, pond, reservoir, well, filter gallery, or any other water used as a source of public water supply or any tributary of a source so used, the act, or any aqueduct or other works used in connection therewith, until a plan and description of the lands proposed for such use have been submitted to and approved in writing by the Department of Environmental Protection. Are we going to abide by that? Yeah, I can go ahead if you'd like. Yes, to. Madam Chairman, we would. Uh, if in the course of the Board of Health's review of the uh, proposed cemetery and, and the plans and documentation that will be requested uh, has already been agreed that certain information is going to be provided. And Chapter uh, if, 36 also says uh, agreed parties may appeal directly to the Department of Environmental Protection. For a hearing. Yes, that, that's from an, if there was an approval, a yes. final approval of the. So of we the have plan. a recourse if there is a, an approval. Yes, and if and there was. There was one other paragraph, I forgot, it's 33 or 34. If after 10 people are buried in there and they decide to abandon it, it goes to our wonderful Board of Selectmen for upkeep, <laughs> as if their budget's not strained enough. So that's all. And uh, is there any thought of any wellhead protection for the, the well? At this point, we're still in the beginning stages. Mm -hmm. We want to gather our information and see and then go from there. By all means, we're open to everything, and we're going to take it step by step. Well, the, the wellhead protection zoning bylaw says that uh, the water department can put wellhead protection on existing or future sources of water. So if they paid to have that well drilled and also to, uh, you know, they got a good water report, except the one, the one kicker was radon. And that's remediated by aeration, which is, but the rest of the water was good. And who knows in the future what the water needs for our town is going to be. So. That, if we that's probably something that we'd have to direct towards the water department I, I wish you would okay yep and they're they're aware of proceedings that are going on okay thank right. you for your time thank you in addition uh, madam chairman just for the information of the, the speaker uh, the zoning board of appeals has a right to request reports from town departments when they're considering the zoning issues uh, in question and if there is any indication from those reports that uh, the wellhead would be affected, uh, then they could certainly make arrangements to uh, have 
that review um, under the groundwater protection district. Okay. Um, and the other thing I'll just mention, if I, just for the information of, of the audience, that the zoning board uh, has, uh, has already started its public hearing. There's no limit on the amount of time that the zoning board has to conduct its public hearing. So they've continued it to uh, March 3rd, I believe, uh, for the next meeting. And they can continue it as necessary to receive the information and keep the public hearing open. Um, and only when they close the public hearing, they then still have 90 days to deliberate and make a decision. The Board of Health under 114 section 34 has no time limits on its period of deliberation. So. I just wanted to mention that for the benefit of the applicant, if they're not aware, and for the members of the audience. Thank you. Okay, I have a question. Mm -hmm. That I thought of when Ray was talking about how the stream runs down into his backyard. I'm very familiar with his pond. I drive by it 365 days a year. It um, constantly, it'll be high, it'll be low, it'll be whatever, depending on how much rain we get, whatever. Um, I have special tubes that we had to put around my house to try to um, force drainage to go elsewhere because the natural springs that come down um, were flooding out my basement. And um, I have a rock foundation and I have a dirt floor and I can't tell you the mess that that made in my basement, okay? And we have to constantly put stuff on the rocks to keep the rocks from shifting and everything else. But um, all these cow ponds that they're talking about and everything else literally is on my side like my, I can see the cows when they used to bathe. We could hear them splashing around and everything else in the water. So when they put their vaults in the ground, if they do do that, okay, is that gonna kind of form like a barrier just like these veins do, like where they have to find alternate routes? If there's obstacles, is all that water gonna back up and make it that now it turns that into almost like a swamp land because it's got nowhere to drain? Because every time you put a stone in the way, it's got to find another route and another route. And, another, and the more you bury, all right, the more y y obstacles you're going to have. And eventually the water is not going to drain as fast, which is going to cause all the land that's closest to my house is going to be saturated. And you're going to start to have smells and everything else from just the fact that it's going to turn into like a swamp. You know, I mean, I know from experience, like I said, I have all these drains all over my house just to keep it so it doesn't flood my basement out of control. All right, because there's that much water that runs through my property. I have pine trees. I can't tell you how many pine trees. He can tell you how many pine trees because he's lived there longer than I have that I've lost in my yard because the ground has so much water that pine trees, that the roots are up on the top of the ground, they've fallen over. All right, and it's like because my ground is just washing away because there's so much water that runs through my yard. So if you do have all these obstacles and you don't have, yeah, you have drainage because each one is so far apart, but eventually, if you have too much water, it is going to back up to some degree. And it's not going to be able to drain properly into people's ponds like Ray's. That is something that we will definitely mention when we meet and go further. Thank well, you. That's my thing. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Laurie Smith. I live on Pierpont Road. I know at the onset of the meeting, you had asked. Um, that a uh, written proposal on how they're going to bury mm -hmm. their their dead is going to be given to the Board of Health. I was wondering if it would be possible for them to give us a brief overview tonight so that we would have an idea of what they typically do. Uh, well, I gave that overview in the zoning uh, board meeting, uh, but it is uh, just to reiterate that uh, Muslim burial is no way different from the traditional Jewish and traditional uh, Christian burial. Uh, we wash the dead body uh, and put it in a 100% biodegradable cotton shroud. We don't embalm the bodies and the preferred way is to put the body five feet under the ground. Uh, but uh, we are not, uh, I would say, um, asking for the green burial. This is called green burial, which is most eco-friendly burial in the world and most of the cemeteries uh, in all over the United States and internationally are now preferring the green burial. But we are not, what we have, as we have mentioned, that whatever is the requirement of the town, mm -hmm. whether you want us to put it in a a concrete wall or any other uh, any other wall that uh, uh, reduce 
the contamination to the surrounding, we will abide by that. I'm a scientist myself. I have worked with FDA for 25 years as a medical device in the medical device area. I know what contamination is, and I assure the board and everybody sitting here that we will do our best to, let, uh, to mitigate any concerns, any concerns which have a scientific evidence and which are uh, legitimate concerns. We will try to mitigate those. Thank you. If I may ask a follow-up question. Sure. If the board is going to put restrictions on, if this does get approved and they do have to put the, the bodies in a concrete wall, how is that going to be regulated to make sure that each burial, if, if they have their own burial agent, I'm assuming in the municipal ones right now, our burial agent is the one that's ensuring that that's done. If they have multiple ones, how do we ensure that? Um, because fines is all well and good if they do not follow through with it, but the damage is already done, the contamination is there, so, you know, money isn't going to fix that. I do know that burial agents are, you have, they have to be registered with us, and there is recourse, I, and I understand money and fines, um, for a burial agent, they, they have, they have to be registered with this, with us through this, through the state so there it's like almost like they have a license and they're risking their 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 license it's so not they yeah they have they have, they have rules that they have to abide by as a burial agent the burial agent for the town of Dudley certifies that everything goes the way it should they're gonna have to certify to us and they're gonna especially if it's a funeral director that is the, which our, our burial agent is a funeral director. They're not going to jeopardize their licensure and everything. They have to certify to us that everything is going the way it should be. I really don't think that they would jeopardize their licensure. But again, we can set different standards and things as we're working on it as to follow ups and see that things are done properly. Okay, thank you. And Madam Chairman, just to add to that. Uh, under the same section, one, chapter 114, section 37 of the Mass General Laws, which gives the Board of Health the authority to adopt regulations, it also says that uh, in the event that there are violations of the regulations, that the Board of Health has the authority to close any cemetery or other place of burial within the town for such time as they consider necessary for the protection of the public health. So the, the requirement to abide by the burial agent and the conditions of burial would be in the regulations. The regulations would be incorporated in your decision. And then you have the state statute that allows you to enforce it. So. Great. Thank you. M Madam Chair, if I can make a comment. Certainly. Uh, just uh, another comment regarding the burial and the maintenance. It came up a couple of times. Uh, chances are we'll, we'll probably the, the congregation will hire somebody local, for the, particularly for the excavation, you know, to have uh, somebody who has a local backhoe. And similarly for the uh, for the lawn maintenance, you know, the, at the end of the day, when if all if, if the project is approved and, and the cemetery is ongoing, uh, we mentioned that at the zone, zoning board, uh, the only marker on the ground is a flush plate, probably a little bigger than than, than this sign. Uh, that's going to be flush with the ground. The remaining would be would be uh, grass. So basically, it's a, it's a lawn maintenance uh, issue, which. Chances are we'll hire somebody local to maintain the lawn. May I ask a question? Certainly. Uh, you, you say that um, the, the grave marker will be flush with the ground yeah. and that, um, and that uh, it'll just be mowing lawn, mm -hmm. uh, which would follow along with perpetual care. Um, a lot of the folks here have been showing pictures of Enfield with concrete block and big uh, stones and, and whatnot. Is, is this cemetery to be different from Enfield? I, I can't speak to that cemetery. Um, you know, there may be some other from, uh, you know, uh, the majority could be from other, like Turkey or something, that they are used to putting uh, markers and, and so th I mean, there's variation. But I can assure you this one would be a plate on the ground flush with nothing else. So you're, you're saying that you are a different entity from Enfield and you're not following the practices well, that they well, follow yeah, in not, Enfield. Well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Lynn Swaim, 
Legion 129 Corbin Road, and I missed the last um, statement. Did you say you are not going to follow with the procedures of the burials at the Enfield, Connecticut grave sites? As far as the above ground or below ground? As far as how it's going to look topographically when you look at it. You it's, said there's only going to be a be small level. plate. Okay. So then this here uh, is not what your cemetery is going to look like, correct? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, we. Our, Excuse me. No. Excuse me. Just please let everybody have I'm their chance to speak. Go that, ahead. Uh, this cemetery has brought into uh, thing, the, but this is not the right example, and this is not the example for all cemetery. If anybody goes to the West Roxbury Cemetery, that is very different from this this cemetery. How this appears, we will most probably follow the cemetery in the West Ro Roxbury, which have the flush name plates. And there are nothing like this that you can see in the Garden of Mercy in West Roxbury Cemetery. May I but ask? This is the excuse, me, excuse, excuse me. May I ask a question just to clarify something for everyone? I think it might. Um, the Enfield, Connecticut Cemetery you do not own. We don't own. This is. It, under, it is owned by another entity. Yes. And there is. are other religions. Uh, you said Turkey. Other, other things. Sides, yeah. Other things. Very. It's not just your. The Greater Worcester Islamic Society burying there. Is yes. that correct? That's correct. Okay, that thank cemetery you. cemetery is under the supervision of uh, Islamic uh, Center of uh, Connecticut. Okay. Uh, and as far as the maintenance of that is done, uh, to my knowledge, they have uh, uh, given the charge of that maintenance to a local uh, uh, local area, um, it's called Williams uh, Monuments or something, I think they do the maintenance. So uh, I don't know why this is brought over and over as if it is our responsibility to maintain this, this cemetery where we, we are using and we are grateful uh, to them that they allow us to bury our loved ones over there. Okay. The, the big concern that was going on said was is that that uh, th these photos show where you're, the burial site that you're using currently, um, and uh, the big concern is that if you are able to put a cemetery here in Dudley, that it would indeed look like this one as well. That that's what uh, that's why it keeps being brought up because it, it needs to be said. We understand that, and we will keep it as tidy as possible in our control. That we will keep it. Uh, very neat looking and very uh, tidy. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And one other thing that I'd also like to address, I understand that right now there are regulations for the public cemeteries, cemeteries in the town of Dudley. Um, however, each of those cemeteries are roughly between one to two acres in size. And right now we're looking at a lot of 55 acres. And granted they're saying they're only going to use 25 acres. That's what the proposal is now. What is going to be down the road if this is approved? And I do have great issues with the water table being disturbed by that site. My property is, runs downhill from there. That stream off of the property from the ponds runs all the way through the backs of our yards, all the way down over to Mr. Borowski's property. Excuse me. And then it goes all the way down, feeds down all the way down to Hayden Pond, Marino Pond, all the ponds. I have great, great concerns about the water table. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Matt Dix, 184 Corbin Road. I have a question. Um, it was earlier discussed that we're going to have an on-site meeting with engineers to dig holes and take readings and things of like that. When those <coughs> actions are taking place, do we have rights to be there? Do I have the legal right to hire my own engineer to be present at that? Could I be invited to that? Would these folks invite me? Would the owner, the current owner of the property invite me? Who would I ask so that they can review <laughs> the documents that are going to be generated by this engineering firm just to confirm it because everybody makes mistakes? Could you ask people to speak into the mic? I'm hearing impaired. Oh, I can't certainly. understand half of these people. Okay, right. thank you. This fellow, oh, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Okay, please, um, if you could, when you come up, please be sure to speak into the mic there. there it is difficult to hear right. in the way Matt back. Matt Dix, 184 Corbin Road. I'm going to refer to you. <laughs> uh, 
Madam Chairman, I think uh, that certainly the Board of Health, uh, as these arrangements are being developed, can consider having representatives of the neighborhood group uh, present. We probably would want to have some designated representatives uh, that so it would be known in advance. That way there could be some, at least some element of, of control on the site. And it would be somewhat similar to a site visit by a zoning board or a planning board where members of a neighborhood might want to attend the site visit and observe what's going on. Um, and then uh, what we want to do is make sure that we wouldn't have a whole lot of interaction uh, at that time. If we're going to have the health agent and the conservation agent present at that point, we probably would want to wait until the results were obtained. But for the purpose of observation, I think, Madam Chairman, we could certainly make arrangements for that. That and then in a private cemetery setting. Can you just, uh, just lean down? In Thank you. a private you. <laughs> cemetery setting, is a, is a bonding something that couldn't be required? Because the best engineers in the world make a mistake, and then the well at my house is no longer worth anything, and I can't get town water to my property. Who's going to pay for that? They might have done everything that we've asked them to do, and I still end up with a piece of property, the biggest investment of my life. Right is worth nothing. So could we ask them to bond like you would a contractor when you're building a school or something like that? I don't know how many millions of dollars we'd have gotcha. to do that for, but. Madam Chairman, I'd be happy to, to, uh, to look into that question. I mean, there's cert there certain bonding requirements. The planning board, when they're approving a subdivision, can require a bond for the completion of the streets and the sewage and the water line, the sewer lines and things of that type. Um, there are bonds that are required under other scenarios. We'd have to determine whether or not, uh, in reviewing the statutes, whether or not the power to adopt regulations would include the power to bond. Uh, but I'll certainly look into it. I, I know that would, <clears throat> although I don't think many of us want to lose value to our property if we don't have control over that or if this scenario doesn't provide us the ability to stop that, at least give us the ability to know that the property we bought is has some marketable value for a home of some kind. You know, right. I, I would just mention, Madam Chairman, just to follow up on my earlier comment, that the, the, the bonding requirements generally are there to ensure the completion of something, like subdivision roads, mm -hmm. or uh, bonds that are required for the completion of uh, construction of an elementary school. When the job is finished, the bonds are released. Right. You're looking for some kind of security, ongoing security, Beyond the beyond the regulations that we'll have, and that's something I'd have to review. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hello, Andrew Jeffers, 136 Corbin Road. I don't know how much bearing it has, uh, but there are also hand dug wells on that property. So I don't know if that is conservation or historical, national heritage. Uh, I don't know who would uh, want to look into that or if you can fill them in or because they are one of them is located uh, towards the back of the barn found out the hard way about 10 years old don't go over there well the board's broken I had to dig my way out so I know there's at least one I've been told there's others um, the other thing is um, I don't exactly know how to ask it but everyone's concerned about the property being wet now depending on the time of year and the year that property is extremely wet or extremely dry and granted I'm only turning 32 but from what I can remember that property is mostly wet and the fields that are hayed depending on spring fall sometimes don't get cut because the fields are so wet so you could this year go this is the swamp this is the delineated wetland this is the field. Next year, that could be all underwater from drainage. And that's one of my concerns on the property. So. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening. My name is Wesley Moraska. I just have a question to the board of help also you know for the people you brought up a lot of information but you need, you need to think a little deeper and bring it up everything to a board of health and our engineer we have one. that's another thing I would like to bring it up we should have 
bona fide civil engineer to oversee the engineer. Granted, this blueprint is not even close what's out there. These gentlemen didn't even know there was a well there. You know more than anybody in here. Whatever you can come up, bring it in. Wells, septics, whatever it's out there. So everything it goes on the blueprint. And we should oversee. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Sansusi, um, 212 Ramshorn Road. I'm wondering if you're planning to conduct any water tests on the 40 or more wells in the immediate area. They're on private land and that they surround the 55 acre property in question. I think a baseline in terms of the quality of their water should be established in case down the road there are issues with pollution. Okay. And I would also ask that studies be conducted which will indicate how much water flows off of that land because you can see on the topo map it does flow off of that land and it ends up in Hayden Pond and beyond there and what the amount of water is that leaves that 55 acres and ends up in neighbors yards and ultimately in Hayden Pond. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay. So we'll just take a couple more and then. Um... I don't know who owns the property, but when she just said that, she reminded me. There's a house that was built on Hayden. It's on the opposite side of all the other houses. Not sure of the number, but whoever got the permit to build that, they built a dirt bridge. And we had a bad year one year. And you know what? Those people got stranded on their property because their driveway washed away. Because the water that came down was so strong. Don't know who it was if you're even in this room. But it was so strong that they literally couldn't get out of their yard because it was gone. And then just a little further down Hayden, there's another bridge that is to somebody's private property. Don't know if they're in here, but they also, it was paved and the water was so high, it sunk their pavement in and they had to pay a lot of money to have that whole thing reconstructed because I think there's two houses down there that share that driveway. I think it's uh, 79 and another, another number, but they, they share that driveway and it was another thing high water washed it right away and you never know from year to year it all depends on how our winter goes and how much rain we get as to how high it's going to be okay. thank you my name is Henry Jeffers I live at 133 Corbin Road and one thing I am hearing impaired, anyone that's come to the mic, I ask them to please speak very distinctly and very clearly. I also volunteer to be one of the site people to uh, help when you send somebody down that needs to know the area. I've lived at that location for 40 years. I know every inch of Charlie Meninsky or Annabelle Meninsky's land. I also recommend, as another representative, S Steve Borowski, because he's a lifetime member and his uh, he and his family have lived on the land and used to own that property that is now the Meninsky's. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Steve Kowalski again, 161 Corbin Road. We are hearing all this stuff about, and we Steve, have all... use the mic. I'm trying. We have uh, hearing all the well problems and everything else. May I make a suggestion that the planning board rescind cemetery use where there's no town water? If they had bought property where there, was, where there was town water, you wouldn't have this problem. So, you know, I think, you know, we have to maintain our own wells, our own septic system. We're all out in the, the hinterland, probably forgotten by everybody. But uh, we have, a, you know, we have to take care of our own wells and everything else. If something happens, nobody's going to pay for it. If our septic system backs up, we're going to call uh, the guy to come and pump it out. If the well goes, 
We have to get somebody to work on a well. You know, we, we're basically almost self-sufficient. Get a piece of land where there's town water, and then you can have your cemetery. Thank you. Okay. I just want to thank you for coming this evening and thank everyone. Um, I will be sending information to town council. We'll be corresponding, and then I will forward on to you um, what we're looking for. Um, okay, and just so that you know, our next meeting is March the third Tuesday. Sorry, hold on. March 16th. I think that's, yeah, that's. Yes, it'll be March 16th at 6.30. And you should have correspondence from us before then. I thank you for coming out this evening. Thank you for your time. Thank you to everyone. Thank you. Okay, now we'll be moving on to old business. All right, I'll recess the meeting for two minutes for everybody that would like to leave to leave. <laughs> Take a recess, thank you. Yes.
start in uh hopefully you didn't do a close-up on my lip I think we can stop. Okay. Do you have any All questions right. of me, Madam Chairman? Before you, I know you've got old business you're dealing with, so well. Um, we we'll just have a couple quick things to get through. Yeah. Um, then uh, if I can touch base with you real quick before you leave. Oh sure, I'm happy okay. to wait. Yeah. Um. All right. So, first up is old business. Um, we were supposed to be having a rabies clinic in March, but it seems to be that um, that'll be postponed due to have not having a current clerk at this time. We will get it going in the future as soon as possible and keep you updated on that. We will be having Earth Day coming up in April. Um, we'll work on a date for that. Offhand, I think it's for some reason it's going to fall around that same Saturday that we're doing the emergency preparedness, so we might have to bump it off a week so that we can do that. Earth Day um, is the day before that. Okay, so we're going to have to bump it out a week, either before or so, after. Yeah, we were planning on uh, the third Saturday in yeah, April? Yeah, I think it's the 23rd. Is that Earth Day is? The 22nd, I think. Earth Day is the Friday? day before that. Yeah. So we can push it back a week or push it earlier a week, you know. Our Earth Day event or the? Uh... Our Earth Day event. Okay. <laughs> yeah, All right, that's, I'll see what works for everybody and we'll okay. get that going. Any other old business? Okay, moving on to new business. Um, there were a couple complaints and we'll touch base. I will be sending that to the health agent. Um, at the next meeting there will be variants coming in front of us for a well. That information will be coming forward. And one of the new things that I know we need to touch on is it's been publicized quite recently how the state does limited inspections on nail salons. And it's been publicized recently on the news and everything and w about one of the salons in Dudley that goes above and beyond. And it, the question was raised to us if the Board of Health could step in and regulate nail salons and things of that nature. And I... Yeah, so the, qu the question is, uh, in light of the uh, recent concerns, are we doing everything we can to... Uh, in terms of health and safety of the I think citizens of the town of Dudley, should we look into uh, something more? So I definitely think we should. Like we look, look, we had to write rules and regulations for a tattoo parlor. Sure. Um, I definitely think that this is something we need to look into. Need to see if we. I know the board of health can regulate things. How many nail salons are there in town? Um, I can think of two, three off. Yeah. Three or four, actually four off the top of my head right four. now. Are, are they combined with hair or are they just nails? Some are combined with hair. Some, I think most of them are combined with hair. Maybe one's just nails. Two maybe are just nails. Mm -hmm. But I definitely think it is something that we should look into and it's something that we could set forward if the board feels, if we're in agreement. Sure, sure. Let's uh, talk to the health agent and see what research can be done. Okay, I think that's definitely great and we'll have more information hopefully for the next meeting. Okay. Any other new business? No? no. All right. Seeing none. Make a motion to adjourn. Second the motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion uh, to adjourn at 8-11.